Hey, God bless you, Pastor Jeff. Another very short video, but this one is on something that, wow, we could talk for an hour or more. And it is on this issue of curse, cursing. God cursed you and me and all humanity and the ground on which we walk on planet Earth, having seen the disobedience of Adam and Eve. He then gave all of it a curse. Now, you know, there's a good news here. We're going to get to that. Jesus Christ removed the curse. But let's first look at the curse itself. It's back in Jesus, I'm sorry, Genesis 3, 18, or 17, rather. Let's start in 17. God is now speaking to Adam. He says, because you've heeded the voice of your wife and have eaten from the tree of which I commanded you, saying you shall not eat of it, cursed, C-U-R-S-E-D, cursed is the ground for your sake. In toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Well, that applied to all humanity. Look at this. Look at this, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 3. Let me go through here and look at that. Wow. This is just so strong. Well, let me just start in chapter 2, verse 1. And the Holy Spirit speaking through Paul to the Ephesians says, And you he made alive, we're talking about Jesus, who were dead in trespasses and sins, which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom we also all were once conducted ourselves in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh, and of the mind, and now look at this, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. In other words, you were born into a curse. You were born into a curse. If you don't accept the answer, the resolution, the gift, the incredible, incredible gift, you will continue to be cursed. You will continue to die without God. You will die in your flesh. You will have eternity without him. His word tells us in Luke 13 verses 1 to 5, Jesus repeats this twice. Unless you repent, you will perish. You will perish in the curse. The curse weighs you down until you are liberated in Christ. So let me also read Romans 8.21. Thanks for your patience while I go through this. Shows you how high-tech we are here. It says, <laughs> well, let's start in verse 20. Here we are in Romans 8, verse 20. For the creation was subjected to futility. There again, you've got the curse. Not willingly, but because of him. God, it was God's plan who subjected it. Uh, this is good. Subjected it in hope. Even when there was a curse planted rightly so by God, there was hope. Verse 21, because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Well, that liberty is Christ alone. Wow. Wow. He is our liberty. And I want to also refer to the truth, and that is, let's look back at Genesis 12. Wow. Couldn't be more basic, but our God only gives out blessings or he gives out curses. You want to be on the blessing team. I'm going to read, starting in verse 1 in Genesis 12. 
Now the Lord said to Abram, get out of your country, from your family, from your family's house, your father's house, to a land that I will show you. I'll make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. You shall be a blessing. And I'll bless those who bless you. I will curse him who curses you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Well, I want you to get the point here. Remove the curse. You and I have the ability to take advantage of this incredible gift of Christ. Let's read about it in John. That's so good. I'll conclude with this. The book of John is just so spot on with this. And you know that John 3.16, let's read the reality in that it is more than 316. Ah, oh, it's so strong. Here we go. Let's start in 13. This is John 3, 13. It says, and Jesus says, No one has ascended to heaven, but he who came down from heaven, that is the Son of Man who is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him shouldn't perish, but have eternal life. In verse 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him, well, you have to repent and believe, believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God didn't send his son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. Yeah, from what? From the curse. He who believes in him is not condemned. But look at this. We're quoting verse 18 here, John 3, 18. He who believes in him isn't condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he's not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that the light has come into the world and men loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone practicing evil hates the light, doesn't come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. And verse 21, but he who does the truth comes to the light that his deeds may be clearly seen that they have been done in God. And the he, capital W, who does the truth. This is the one, Jesus, brings light that his deeds may be clearly seen that they have been done in God. Wow, I just hope you get this point. There is a curse out there into which you were born. You need to claim Jesus as the light of the world, the only way by which you shall not perish. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, forgive me for any mistake I made in this video. Forgive me that this may not be professionally done, but it comes from my heart. Lord, I just pray many, 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 all seven billion on the planet will receive the truth, and that is that there was a curse rightly imposed by Almighty God, when the very first humans disobeyed him. And then in your mercy, in your love, in your incredible sacrifice, you sent your son to cure, to complete, to resolve, to redeem, to remove the curse by his own blood. And I pray many will now open their minds, open their hearts, see that they have eternity in front of them, either without the loving God or with the loving God. And Lord, I pray they will pick Christ, Jesus, the Messiah, Yeshua, the Messiah. Oh my gosh, may many pick 
the Lord even today. In Jesus' name, amen. Yes, thank you. Keep in touch. Pastor Jeff, J-E-F-F, at repentday.com, R-E-P-E-N-T-D-A-Y.com. I'd love to hear from you. Hey, and thank you so much. God bless you.